everybody. Weather Tramp here. You can call me LT. Uh, today is... What is today's date? I don't even know here. Hold on one second. It's uh, April. We're getting a late start on the day. It's 10.50. It took me seven kilometers to get here. Uh, it was mostly city walking. I didn't... Who hasn't seen a city before? Uh, it's Saturday, April 29th. 10 to 11 in the morning. You're running late today for one simple reason, weather. It's beautiful today. But all week it's just been snowstorm on Monday, snowstorm on last Saturday, rain all week, just cold, wind, gray, dark, it was horrible. Check the weather this morning, it's going to be beautiful, probably freezing tonight, about around 10, 12 degrees today. It's time to get going, get some, uh, we're out here just going to do, a, I got this train just started rolling by here, so... But uh, we're going to check out some gear today. We're going to break the boots in. We're going to do a gear review. Uh, and we're just going to go and have some fun today. So I'm taking you along. And uh, hopefully we're going to have a great time today. We're here in the great city of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. For anybody that might be tuning in that's not from Canada, Winnipeg is the heart, uh, heartland of all of Canada. It's right smack dab in the middle. Uh, Winnipeg is the capital city here in Manitoba. Um, today I'm going to be doing my out and back. I'm going to head down the Seine River, which feeds into the Red River, the mighty, mighty Red River. Uh, we're going to follow the Seine River as far as, as close as we can, all the way down to hopefully Duff Roblin Provincial Park, which is just on the other side of the perimeter highway, which is the speed route around the city, so you don't have to come through the city. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do. I guess there's no time to get started like the present. Okay, here we are again. Uh, it's about an hour later. I really haven't got too, too far. I uh, got uh, some confusion trying to find the Trans Canada Trail. The Trans Canada Trail picks up on the Seine River. Uh, there's a few other trails that come off of this river, I do believe. There was some confusion on how I was getting there, and people are trying to. I stopped and talked to a couple people, and they wanted me to walk the road all the way until I can pick it up again. And I'm like, no, 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 I know the, I can find the trail somewhere. It's a river, you know? So here we are, we're on the trail. And uh, this is the Trans Canada Trail. It's beautiful, except for all the garbage, but it's springtime, so with the ice melting back and it deposits the trash behind. But uh, as you can see, I'm in the city. I got buildings all around me here. But uh, let's take a walk and see what we got here. Okay, so here we go again. So, now I'm pretty much positive that this is part of the Trans Canada Trail. There was a map of that there on the trail that pointed it out. And that's how I just disregarded everybody else's comments about walking down the road. Uh, I'm not going to break in boots by walking down a road. <laughs> Now can't get the pack settled on my back the way I want it to by walking down the road. This is ups and downs. This is what I'm looking for. This is the whole purpose of today, is to get out, get sweaty, and uh, get myself physically prepared, but also mentally prepared. Uh, the thing about it's so I've been called leather tramp for a long time. I, I hitchhike all over the place so that I can backpack all over the place. 
This is the first year that I'm actually putting it on film. I'm probably not very good at it, but as the time goes by, I'm sure I will learn some improvement there too. Uh, all these logs here, they're from the ice pushing up, which is kind of neat. I like that about the Red River, Seine River, Assiniboine River. Um, there's other rivers here too, obviously, but so, uh, yeah, so I got my, my name, Leather Champ, a long time ago. I added the expeditions because this year I'm planning on hitchhiking to four different provinces in Canada, as well as two territories. And I plan on backpacking in six national parks in Canada. And I think my opening trip is going to be here in Manitoba. It's going to be walking the Manterio Trail, which I believe is only a four-day stint. Um, it will be my shortest trip. Oh, scared the little squirrel there. It will be my shortest trip of what I'm doing all year, and I expect to be gone probably at least six months uh, by the time I get everything said and done. Watch I don't twist an ankle, kill myself on my on my breakout, my shakedown trip here. So yeah, anyways, we're uh, gonna put this camera away here for a little bit, and uh, when I see something else that's interesting, I'll pop you back on. Okay, well a little bit further down the trail here, it's uh, it's really pretty walking around here. A um, couple things to note that uh, <laughs> the water that you're looking at here in my camera is uh, a little, let's say, on the brown side. Uh, I haven't seen a river in Manitoba that's not on the brown side. Um, but that was where that's, that's where I'm going to be getting my drinking water from. So we are going to be putting the water filter to the test, and I'll we'll get on video with uh, with the water filter and pumping that up. But uh, the thing, the reason why I came back on is because. Obviously, you can see the trail. Um, this trail has been here, obviously, for a long time. Uh, but I haven't found one posting for the Trans-Canada Trail yet. There's not one trailblaze. There's not one significant marker of any sort that says that this is a Trans-Canada Trail. Now, maybe I'm not on the Trans-Canada Trail. I'm quite sure that I am. So whoever takes care of this part of the TCT, come on, guys. Get out here, throw some blazes up, let people know, let's be proud of the fact that we're backpacking, hiking on the Trans-Canada Trail. This is Canada's longest, most prominent trail, and I don't find one marker anywhere. Shame. Okay, I'm in the city. I'm walking down the city street here. The Trans-Canada Trail was beautiful. Following it along, I'm seeing all the deer sign, the hoof marks in the mud, the scat. Coming around the corner, bend in the river, and the river, or the trail just ends. Just absolutely ends. So here I am now in the backyard of some lady's house. I announce my, hello, hi, how are you? Oh, come on up, you want some water? Got a new map, pulled it out, got her help to see where exactly I am in the city. So, right now I am currently somewhere in, I believe, St. Boniface. New map. We'll have a look later and we'll, uh, I'll show everybody what route I've been taking. But uh, the goal is to get back to the Trans-Canada Trail, or at least get back to the Seine River somewhere. But I don't want to walk across people's private properties. So, I guess for a little bit, and I just detest pounding my feet on this concrete but what are you going to do when you're trying to get through a city but uh when i get through the city or if i find something of interest i'll be clicking you back on not to worry folks not to worry Sure, exactly what time it is right now, but we just did a whole bunch of 
city walking, but as you can see now, and I believe I found a little bit of a trail. Not too sure. Let's follow along and see how we make out. So nice to get the feet off the asphalt. So nice. Alright, I'm not sure exactly where I'm going here. I think this is going to cost me a lot of time instead of just straight walking. But, yep, uh, we got to figure this out here. It's nice to see this tree is starting to get a little bit of a few buds on it. That's always beautiful. Alright, well, I'm going to find out where I am at. And uh, I guess my next priority here coming up soon is uh, sitting down, pulling out the stove, making something to eat. And, uh, yeah, I've been going for, for a few hours now. It's uh, not a trip that I'm trying to kill myself on. It's, oh, as I uh, trip over that branch or that root. Uh, this is getting to be a little bit of a pain. Alright, I'm going to put the camera away so I can focus on what I'm doing. Instead of taking out an eye or something. We'll catch up with you again. Okay, well, this road is Furmore. This is the number one high. Uh, this is the number one Trans Canada Highway. I was hoping to do the Trans Canada Trail to the Trans Canada Highway. I thought that would have been kind of neat, but uh, yeah, not to be. <laughs> so, anyways, just I just came. There's a park and a swimming pool. I just came through there between there and the golf course, and these two young lads, just perfect gentlemen. Can't say enough good things about these two lads. Uh, they had a 40 pounder of Hennessy on them. Excuse me, sir, he says. Would you care for a swig to keep you moving today? Absolutely. Thank you very kindly. Oh, have another swig, sir. Well, thank you very kindly one more time. Put the cork back in the bottle, handed it back, and uh, got across this busy highway here. We got the Seine Rivers right down here. Sorry if it's so shaky right now, but. The ground I'm walking on isn't, it's just soft, it's rutted, but, uh, so this is where the Seine would come across underneath the, of the highway, Furmore Highway, number one, and now I know it looks like I'm walking away from the highway, but I'm actually going, where am I going? I'm not sure where I'm going. Well, when I find out where I'm going, I'll let you know. It's so loud and noisy here, I want to keep my footing. And uh, we'll catch you back in a little bit. Okay, so I just stopped down for lunch. I uh, just made it across that Furmore Bridge there where the Seine River ran underneath. Uh, the river's right here, but I'm in this really nice little area here. And uh, I was getting hungry. I wanted to get off my feet for a little bit, so we got the GSI Outdoors Soloist. Stove cooking up some healthy choice chicken with rice soup, rice crispy square, and an O Henry bar. Okay, well, that road, if you can see that road up there, that's Bishop Grandin. And that Seine River is this way, just this creek is flowing into it. Nice little creek. I'm going to have to get it across this somehow. It's a little bit wider than what it looks. I'm very high up right now compared to it. It's probably about 20 feet. But that's Bishop Grand, and I need to get down here, get across this, and then get across that major highway. Pick up on the Seine, and that should be all green space from here all the way to where I'm going to be camping up for the night. So. It's, uh, <laughs> excuse me, probably about 2.30 in the afternoon, and uh, we're going to keep going. We had a beautiful lunch break, <coughs> um, uh, another deer uh, while I was eating, so that puts my deer total of the day up to five, which is excellent. 
But uh, deer are very quick, and when they sense you or they smell you, they, uh, they zip. So no time to pull out the cameras, uh, but uh, we'll try to see what we can do about that a little bit here. I got the camera always in my hand now, and uh, we'll see if we can't get you that wildlife. Okay, carrying on. trail we found the Seine River we just got over that Bishop Grandin over there uh, you can see these trucks and stuff going by there in the background maybe uh, looks like a beautiful path so let's have a walk Uh, the Lord sure has blessed me with beautiful weather today compared to what we've been through the last week, guys. It's such a beautiful little trail. I love these little single tracks. They, uh, they really give you that feeling of just being out there, you know? So, one of my favorites. Well, it looks like we got a couple of wet decisions to make here. We'll head this way. Yeah, it's just uh, when this place gets treed in, I'll bet you it's just right pretty. And see now here how the narrow the Seine River starts to get. So when the water level drops in the summertime, there's some places of this river, there's a loon over there. Oh no, that's just a goose. Oh, a mallard. I'm sorry, I'm not wearing my uh, eyeglasses right now. Um, but you can imagine in the summertime how narrow this river would get when the water level really drops. I mean, a 17-foot canoe, I don't even think would even be able to fit in here. Well, that's why we get out and enjoy it while we can, right? Okay, let's travel along. Get back to the path. See my shadow there. I'll change that. Here we go. Just a beautiful day. Still really missed a miffed about the uh, no markings on the TCT. I, uh, I don't really understand that. And uh, I guess we're just going to have to look into it. And, uh, you know, maybe get out there and volunteer my own time. If uh, that's what it takes to help create a better trail system for people to get out and enjoy. The Canada, the Canada 
Trans Canada Trail, if I can spit it out here, uh, is something that I would really love to do, but it would only be as a section hike because I don't know. It would take it would take over a month just to clear a province, maybe two months per province. So uh, I know that here in Manitoba, the trail goes north, it goes south, as well as east and west. So every time you think that you're making a little progress to the east or the west, you're either heading north or south for quite a distance. So. Uh, but would love to section hike it. Alright. Got a little washout here. You know, and there's another thing here I'll bring to mention. This is a good workout, guys. It's, uh, river walking is up and down. And up and down. The whole trail. And, uh, that's something that I just really, really love myself, so... Uh, another little makeshift bridge here. And again, this will be our drinking source. Alright. Well, I'm going to put the camera away and uh, let's see if I can make, make up a little bit of miles. I lost some time in the city. I'll get into that later when I get camp. But uh, we're just going to try to make up some miles here. So... We'll talk to you in a bit, or something interesting comes up, you'll be the first to know it. Okay, here I am again. Bag is looking like it's been ripped open. What's going on? Camp is being set up. All right, this is our little area that we have. It's, uh, it's a good little scooter. It's right on, the, on a real sweeping bend. We got some mallards here in the creek, so I'm going to talk a little quieter, move a little slower. Let's see, there he is. Can't see that, I'm not sure. Looks like we have some beaver activity going on. Check this out. I don't know if that's beaver. That certainly does look like beaver, doesn't it? I'll probably be getting my water off of I'm going to do that right away. We'll take you over. Okay, take you over. The river's right here. We got a nice little area of land. Very, very rolly around here. And uh, so we got the tent set up. The hubba hubba. And uh, the bag is over there. some water. I got water. I think I have enough water for the night. But I am going to take my dirty bag and I'll show you that. Oh, let's just do it right now. Colossible Nalgene, uh, wide mouth, 48 ounce. So what I'm going to do is because of the color of the water, we'll come down here and we'll have a look at it again. Whoa, step in that hole. That'll just break your ankle or something quick. Alright, let's see what kind of tracks we have down here. Then we'll know what we're looking at. So we got some geese tracks. We got deer deer marks, deer feet right here. So 
So I want to get out there where that water is moving to fill up my dirty bag. And the problem, the reason I want to fill up my dirty bag, how sturdy is this tree? Successful. All right. So you can see the water doesn't look too, too bad. But I use this dirty water bag uh, in a case like this. Uh, it just makes it easier instead of precariously balancing on a on a, the log dangling in the river. Uh, it's nice that you can see that water swirling there. I hope you can see that water swirling there anyways. Um, and just put my filter into the top of the bag and as I pump it into the clean bottle it's just a lot a lot easier for me you know so we always try to do and you know I'm out here all by myself so um, there's nobody around I mean if I was to have something happen to me um, there's nobody here so I don't like taking unnecessary risks uh, but uh, so, there's a good example of not taking an unnecessary risk. Just get it done and get it over with. So, okay. This water, I'm hoping with any sediment that will be in it come morning will have settled to the bottom. I'll put my filter in. It saves your filter. It makes your, it allows your filter to last a lot longer. Um, by the look of the animals around here, I'm going to be hanging my food tonight. Uh, mostly just for the small critters, like uh, maybe raccoons, uh, mice. Moles, voles, whatever you want to call all those little guys. So, uh, I just will take this over. I'm going to start slowly bringing my stuff over to my campsite. I just dropped my bag there. I was, I'm getting tired. My feet are a little on the sore side. But, uh, all in all, great day. Uh, I'm going to do an end of the day wrap up about how the day went. Uh, and I'll see if I can't by then have figured out my mileage. Well, I'm Canadian. It's going to be in kilometers. I'm sorry to upset you, U.S. of America, but that's just the way it is. Okay, drop the water. Well, actually, just set it up there. Okay, uh, I'm going to continue on with camp chores. Get myself all set up. It's uh, 5.30 in the afternoon, quarter to 6. Uh, it's going to be light until, for another couple of hours anyways. I'm not even sure right now, but... Uh, yeah, I'm going to get these boots off. I'm going to get my feet elevated a little bit. I'm going to, and then I'm going to get on to cooking some dinner. Uh, and I'll get back with you then.